Hey, Smarty Pants, what's more relaxing than being out in nature? Come on, let's take a few deep breaths together. Ready? Breathe in. Breathe out. Breathe in. Breathe out. Hey, what you doing? Little meditation out here in the pines? Oh, hey, Grasshopper. Yeah, we were just appreciating the beauty and tranquility of the natural world and the relationship between the sun, the trees, the flower, and the animals. Ah, the whole cycle of life thing. It's nice. Yep. Humans and other mammals breathe oxygen and exhale carbon dioxide, while plants breathe carbon dioxide and exhale oxygen. It's a perfect give and take. The truth is, we couldn't live without plants. Like this big beauty I'm sitting right next to, with the big red leaves and the cute little spikes on the end. You mean this pretty plant I'm sitting on? Oh, (laughs) this is no ordinary plant. (laughs) Yep, (laughs) it's got me all right. (laughs) Yep, it's got me. I'm so silly. What do you mean it's got you? What's happening? This is a special kind of plant that eats grasshoppers. But hey, cycle of life, right? (laughs) Um, until we meet again. Eats grasshoppers? Oh no. But hey, it's cool. Plants gotta eat too, right? But I'm confused. I thought plants ate sunlight and nutrients from the soil that their roots suck up. Hi, let me help you out here. I'm what is known as a Venus flytrap, one of many carnivorous plants. Plants can be carnivorous? As in meat eating? Hey, smarty pants, did you know that some plants ate meat? You did? You're blowing my mind. What else do carnivorous plants eat besides careless grasshoppers? I can't speak for everyone, but I like to eat ants and spiders and beetles. I love the beetles. But you look so pretty and innocent. I never would have suspected. That's part of the game, right? If we looked dangerous, we'd starve. Good point. So why is it that some plants eat insects? How do they digest them? And could they eat me? It's time for another whiff of science on... Who smarted? Who smarted? Who smart? Is it you? Is it me? Is it science? Or history? Listen up! Everyone! We make smarting lots of fun on Who Smarted? Okay, when I have a question about poo, I call my friend. Why me, of course. Poo emoji. But when I have a question about plants, I call my botanist friend. And a botanist is someone who studies plants. Hello there, botanist friend. Hello, narrator friend and all you smarty pants listening. What can I help you with? Let's start with the basics. Why do some plants eat animals? As most of you know, the majority of plants get their nutrients from the sun, the air, and the soil in a process called photosynthesis. But in places where the soil's thin or not so nutritious or mineral rich, like an acidic bog, plants have to be more creative. So they trap animals, usually, but not always, insects. And when those insects decompose, the plant laps up their nutrients. I see. I'm a little surprised to find this Venus flytrap here in North America. I figured it would only grow somewhere like the rainforest or jungle. Kids, where do you think carnivorous plants live? Oh yeah? Interesting. Let's find out. As it turns out, carnivorous plants can be found on every continent. Except Antarctica. And they grow on lots of Pacific islands. So how can a plant eat an animal? For that, let's go on a carnivorous plant journey. In 1860, Charles Darwin... That's me! Yes, hello, Charles. Known as the father of evolutionary theory, Darwin was on a vacation in England, and while out taking nature walks, he discovered many dead insects caught in the leaves of a plant called the common sundew otherwise known as Drosera rotundifolia. He became obsessed and wrote about it. At this present moment, I care more about Drosera than the origin of all the species in the world. 
The way some Draceras work is this. Thirsty bugs flying around looking for a drink see some dewdrops sitting on the leaves of a plant. They land to get a drink, only to discover it's not water. It's actually a glue that traps insects. Some Draceras have a nectar, sugary stuff that bugs want, but when bugs land on it, sticky hairs bend over and trap the insect. And then more of the sticky stuff makes the insect suffocate. Wow, the cycle of life can be pretty rough. Indeed. So that explains how a Drosera can trap and even kill an insect. But how does a plant eat and digest an animal? Well, Darwin and some of his friends found that Drosera secreted a fluid, kind of like the gastric juices in your stomach that breaks down your food, that could dissolve the cartilage, bone, and meat of insects. Whoa. We call those enzymes. Yes, enzymes. Many carnivorous plants break down their prey into a blob of mush, and all that's left at the end is a pile of crunchy tidbits. By Jove! I sometimes think Drosera is really just an animal in disguise. Drosera, which kind of looks like an angry dandelion with a pale green center and red spikes with a dewy drop at the end, are not animals, but they kind of behave like one. Ah. When an insect walks over their leaves, the sticky tentacles on the leaves bend over to trap it. (laughs) Darwin tried putting all kinds of other things on the leaves to see what would happen. Gum, gelatin, egg whites, saliva, mucus, urine. As in pee? Yeah, you know, for science. Darwin discovered the leaves could actually tell the difference between a random substance touching them and a live animal. (gasps) By knowing the difference, the plants don't waste energy trapping something that's not worth eating. That's pretty smart. Darwin thought so, too. Is it not curious that a plant should be far more sensitive to a touch than any nerve in the human body? Darwin spent 15 years studying these plants and then published his book, Insectivorous Plants, in 1875. Instant classic. But there are plenty of other carnivorous plants besides the Drosera. Want to know how they work their meat-eating magic? We sure would, right after this quick break. Now back to who smarted. So where are we off to? We're headed to Asia. To observe the marvelous variety of pitcher plants. Pitcher plants have vase-shaped blooms that are filled with sweet nectar. And they look like a pitcher you'd keep water or iced tea in. Oh, they're so pretty. And deadly. As an animal attempts to get the nectar, it falls into a pool of digestive enzymes in the bottom of the pitcher which reduces it to a jelly. Ew, but plants gotta eat, right? Right. There are about 80 different kinds of pitcher plants, and many have different methods of getting animals inside them. Such as? Well, one variety known as the yellow trumpet has a nectar that paralyzes insects. Unable to move, they fall right in. So do pitcher plants just eat bugs? What do you think, smarty pants? What animals do you think pitcher plants eat? Small ones like ants, flies, wasps, and beetles? Bigger ones like slugs and snails? Or much bigger, like frogs, rodents, or lizards? The answer is... all of them. (gasps) Depending on the size of the plant. Wow. How big a plant do you have to be to eat a rat? Well, the vine of the Nepenthes pitcher plant in Southeast Asia can grow up to 50 feet. (gasps) That's bigger than a school bus. Some pitchers are big enough to hold a gallon of liquid. And yes, rats have been found in Nepenthes. Or at least, body parts formerly belonging to a rat. Ew. Oh, it gets way grosser. Let's take a quick trip over to Borneo, shall we? Here you'll find a large carnivorous pitcher plant called Nepenthes raja, which has a 
big red jug, a round opening with a spiked ring around it, and a lid that's open right now. It looks like a terrifying mouth. As with the others, the Nepenthes Raja has a delicious nectar that calls to a furry little fella called the Mountain Tree Shrew. Oh no, no, I can't watch. Hold on. This one's a little different. The nectar is on the edge of the lid that's over the pitcher, and the tree shrew has to straddle the pitcher to get to it. And then it gets eaten? Nope. While it's having a nectar drink with its butt over the pitcher, it poops. And the mountain tree shrew's poop is full of nutrients. Are you saying the plant doesn't eat the tree shrew? It eats its poop? Yep. (gasps) Tree shrews eat wild fruits and berries from plants and then poops them back into the plants to feed them. There's that crazy cycle of life again. Let's head back to North America to the pine habitats of North and South Carolina. Hello again, Venus flytrap. Sup? So where do Venus flytraps get their name from? Do they grow on Venus? Nah, it's because we're so pretty, like the Greek goddess Venus. Venus flytraps kind of look like a toothy clamshell, and inside it are two hairs. Open wide, Venus. Let us have a look. Uh... If an insect touches both hairs, or one of the hairs twice in a row, the clamshell closes. Those teeth lock together so the insect can't get out. And once it's sealed off, it releases gastric juices. After the animal's digested, the clamshell opens again. So, some carnivorous plants, like the heliamphora, don't make their own digestive juices. They just trap an insect and absorb the nutrients after it dies, rots, and decomposes. Ew. The Saracenia plant makes some of its own enzymes, but it also gets some from bacteria that lives inside it. It's a nice trade-off as the bacteria helps the plant digest its food in return for having a nice stomach to live in. Lovely. But wait, there's more. The cobra lily has clear windows in its leaves. Bugs think they're flying to freedom, but they're actually flying into a trap. And there's a big floating bladder wart that lives in the water and has cup-shaped leaves that small water animals get stuck in. Wow, who knew there were so many animal-eating plants? Which leads to my most important question. Can carnivorous plants eat people? No. In fact, people are much more of a danger to carnivorous plants. Uh. Between the destruction of the wetlands where pitcher plants and Venus flytraps live, and exotic plant collectors removing so many carnivorous plants from the wild, many of these plants are in danger of going extinct. That is not the cycle of life, dude. A big shout out to Amelia from Cottage Grove, Minnesota. Thanks for listening to Who Smarted Every Night, Amelia. This episode, Carnivorous Plants, was written by Lisa Selen Davis and voiced by Adam Tex Davis, Charlotte Cohn, Jenna Hoban, Jason Williams, and Jerry Colbert. Additional voices, technical direction, and sound design by Josh Hahn. Who Smarted is recorded and mixed at the Relic Room Studios. Our associate producer is Max Kamaski. The theme song is by Brian Suarez with lyrics written and performed by Adam Tex Davis. Who Smarted was created and produced by Adam Tex Davis and Jerry Colbert. This is an Atomic Entertainment production.